This segment concerns how we construct the formula for the Hubble constant derived from first principles. Now up here is the process we're going to follow which is taking the original expected wavelength of light, applying a Doppler redshift to find wavelength 1 and then applying a cosmologic redshift to find the observed wavelength L. And if it's unclear to you why I'm following that process, please view the segment called Frames of Reference. Now, here's a little reminder of our basic diagram that shows the distance d1, the recessional velocity v1, the distance dl, and the distance dn. So the first step is straightforward. Wavelength 1 equals the original wavelength times 1 plus v1 over c, which is a standard Doppler redshift formula. Now the second part is the cosmologic redshift is given by this formula that the final observed wavelength over wavelength 1, so the ratio of those, is equal to the ratio of dn the final distance over d1, the initial distance. The question of why dn over d1 is the correct ratio to calculate the cosmologic redshift component is addressed in the next video segment which is entitled why dn over d1 and that's why why not the letter y. Why dn over d1? You may, of course, already recognize that that's the correct formula from the segment on the, ba the basic diagram. In any event, this leads us to the final wavelength equals wavelength 1 times dn over di. Now we simply substitute this in for wavelength 1, which gives us the final equation. Final wavelength equals initial wavelength times 1 plus v 1 over c, the Doppler redshift, times dn over d1, the cosmologic redshift. And now that we have this formula, we can look at how do we evaluate or solve the formula, and in particular, in order to do that, we need to know what is V1, what's DN, and what's D1, because we already have C and the initial wavelength. And we need to find out how all of that will give us a value for H.